Welcome to Little Bighorn Treasure Hunting Sources 5, sharing the Native American written language called Togia. This video will show 7th Cavalry guns from the Little Bighorn. Custer ordered that all his men put their names and company on their weapons to avoid confusion and arguments who they belong to. Here are some Springfield trapdoor carbines in 4555. Some having the name, soldiers names on them and the Indians name who ended up with them. Also the 7th Cavalry had 10 trapdoor rifles and 4570 issued to the best shots in the outfit for long range shooting. The first carbine is serial number 43560 and this was the start of my journey into the history of Togia. Purchasing it from a friend, Jackpot Johnny, who I should call Eagle Eye because of the many artifacts he has come across for me. He was selling it for someone else. It has a cracked stock in the wrist, as you can see here, and the stock has been sanded and refinished. Always just oil these things. Don't sand them, don't refinish them, just leave them as they are. The thin wrist was a major flaw in the earlier trapdoor carbines under serial number 43,700. The stock had strange large scratches on the left side also, right here. Also, the serial number was in between 43,540 and 43,617, documented from Company I at the Little Bighorn. At the Tulsa, Oklahoma gun show, while telling a friend about the carbine, he suggested I go talk to Wendell Grandguard, and that was April 2017. Finding his table at the show, I told him about 43560. Wendell told me to send him pictures, and I told him there was an auction picture from Carol Watson's Orange Coast auction. Showing him the picture, looking at it with a magnifying glass, he said, you have a little bighorn gun. Asking how he knew, he pointed to right here and said, there's the Indian's name. Wendell said to send him more pictures, and this is the report I got back. This is the story. During my examination, this 1873 first model Springfield trapdoor carbine, 43560, I found the name Bearbird written in Togia on the wrist, as shown on illustration one. On the left side of the stock is the ceremony of Wakan Wikan, special ceremony of gifting to Wakan Tonka, written in Togia too. The following history comes from the oral testimony of Black Shaw Woman, wife of Crazy Horse through the Black Elk family. In the Aglala Circle, Bear Bird and his brother Wrinkler placed their lodge not far from ours. Bear Bird had fought many times with my husband, Crazy Horse, who told Bear Bird he was one of the best horse stealers in the nation. Bear Bird and his wife Beads and his brother Winkler and his wife Brave lived in the same lodge along with the brother's mother, Big Woman. There were also three children. Beads had two sons and Beaver one daughter. Beads and Brave would always stop to help me set up my lodge and when, especially when I had my coughing spills. Bear Bird and Winkler rode with Crazy Horse at the Battle of Little Bighorn. The following is the story of Red Shirt at Little Bighorn on June 25th, 1876. Red Shirt told his family that when Crazy Horse returned from the swim with Yellow Nose, he prepared himself for battle, but he didn't seem to be in a rush. He seemed to know the outcome of the battle before it started. Crazy Horse left instructions with them to be ready before he went for a swim. When he was finally ready, Crazy Horse gave them more instructions on how to fight, and then they all rode out of camp and crossed the greasy grass at the Deep Coulee Ford. They rode south on the east side of the river looking for long hair, Custer, because the scouts had told Crazy Horse he was coming. Red Shirt said they all rode together and could hear shots in the distance. When they arrived at the battle, the soldiers, Reno, were coming out of the river. Crazy Horse was out in front of Kicking Bear and his testimony said that Crazy Horse hit a soldier with his war club just as the soldier made it to the top of the bank. He kept on killing soldiers with his war club as they came out of the river. Red Shirt said Crazy Horse rode off to the East Ridge to see where Long Hair was. Kicking Bear got off his horse and took a carbine from the first soldier Crazy Horse killed. Many of them got off their horses too, including Red Shirt, and picked up things from the dead soldiers. Red Shirt said he found a revolver 
Soon Crazy Horse came back and said the soldiers of Long Hair were heading north, so they rode back along the east bank of the greasy grass, Little Bighorn. As they rode north, Red Shirt said many more warriors joined them at the Cedar Cooley Ford. Those in the lead with Crazy Horse saw the soldiers coming to the Deep Cooley Ford. Turn north and go up the Deep Cooley. When they arrived at the Medicine Tail Cooley, they saw the soldiers off to the east. Crazy Horse turned the group and rode after those, so those soldiers. Many of the warriors that joined Crazy Horse at the Cedar Cooley Ford split off and followed the soldiers up the Deep Cooley. The soldiers that Crazy Horse was following went over the ridge into the Deep Cooley. Red Shirt said that when they came over the same ridge, they saw the soldiers spread out in two great lines. They came in from east with two moons coming in from the north. Red Shirt said they rode into a buffalo wallow, killing soldiers as they rode. Bullman, a young Oglala warrior, rode beside Red Shirt. They killed two soldiers and dismounted to pick up the soldiers' revolvers. Bullman also took a flag. The revolver Red Shirt took from the soldier in the Buffalo Wallow was serial number 4929. I believe this revolver belonged to Private Charles Graham, Company L, and the revolver Bullman took, serial number 4909, belonged to Private Francis Hughes, the guide-on bearer for Company L. These two soldiers were found by the burial clue, crew close to Captain Keogh, Com Company Commander of Company L, in the Buffalo Wallow. The following is more of Black Shawl Woman's story. After the battle, Bear Bird brought over a rifle he had taken in the North battle against Longhair. He showed my husband if he should put the gun back because he heard Sitting Bull say, nothing should be taken from the soldiers. Crazy Horse told Bear Bird to take the rifle to the medicine man and have him sanctify and perform the Wakon Wikohan special ceremony of gifting to Wakon Tonka. Bear Bird also told a story to Crazy Horse about the battle. He said he always seemed to be in the back of the group when Crazy Horse was killing the soldiers coming out of the river. When the group all turned to go north after Longhair Custer, Bear Bird rode quickly to get in the front of the group by Crazy Horse. Bear Bird felt lucky because he picked up a rifle in the Buffalo Wallow. On May 6, 1877, Crazy Horse surrendered along with Bear Bird and Wrinkler and their families. Later, when Crazy Horse was killed, Bear Bird and Wrinkler followed He Dog and his band of Lala north into Canada, but Wrinkler was killed along the way. When He Dog surrendered in 1880 at Fort Keogh, Bear Bird chose not to surrender but stayed in Montana and became a scout for Miles and the 5th Infantry. Black Shaw Woman told Ellen, Benjamin Black Elf's wife, that in about 1910, Bear Bird's son came to the Pine Reservation to see her. They told her their parents had died and their cousin had married. Bear Bird, by his testimony, took this carbine, serial number 43560, from a soldier from Company I in the Buffalo Wallow. The serial number falls between serial number 43540 and serial number 43617, which are both confirmed Company 7 carbines. The next one is one I've already talked about. It's one that's in just remarkable condition. It's a 1873 Springfield Trapdoor Saddle Ring Carbine. 34146 is the serial number. And the report says, during my examination of this 1873 Springfield Trapdoor serial number 34146, I discovered the name Laughing written in Togi on the left side of the stock. And it said laughing, lower, Yagtoni, road together, blood brother, black cow, grip, gift, fork horn. This showed on illustration one. In another location on the left side of the stock, I found another message. Lower Yanktoni eye, laughing, black cloud, as shown on illustration two. I found, <clears throat> I found lower Yanktoni laughing written on the left wrist as shown in illustration three. Fort Horn is found by the cartoons, illustration four, and Black Cloud is written just below the barrel on the left side, illustration five. Several Togian messages are written on the right side of the carving. The first shown on illustration six states, Lower Yanktonii, Headman, Laughing, Kill Many Soldiers, Battle, Greasy Grass, Rosebud. Another message Shown on the fore end, illustration eight, lower Yanktonii, laughing, gift fork at horn, and finally just under the right side 
on the left stock, I found the following Togia message. Lower Yanktonii, black cloud, mini conju with horns, as shown on illustration nine. I also found the English letters. I also found the English letters WMS Company B written on the left side of the stock by the comb. Laughing was born in 1851 to Lower Yanktonii parents. At the Battle of Greasy Grass, Little Bighorn, Chief Mad Bear and his band were associated with the Hunk Patia, so they rode with Crazy Horse and his Aglala. Laughing rode with his blood brother, Black Cloud, and told his story of his experience at the battle. I rode up to a soldier coming from the west side of the river. He was out in front of many soldiers and was a leader of many men. He had many stripes on his arms. I reached out to take his carbine, and as I grabbed the barrel, the soldier shot it, so the bullet went by my face. I started to bleed. This made me angry, so I hit the soldier in the jaw with my stone war club. The soldier let go of the carbine, but he did not fall off his horse. I rode away with the carbine. I had made a great coup. Most of Laughing Story is written on this carbine, and I believe the English letter I found Written on it are the initials of the man Laughing took it from. I believe these are the initials of William M. Smith, Company B, as a corporal Smith would have had stripes on his shirt. Smith was noted to be severely wounded by riding to Reno Hill. Corporal William Smith was attached to the pack train, which arrived at the battle on the west side of the Little Bighorn. After the battle was over, he reported that he lost his carbine. According to the Togia message on the carbine, Laughing gifted this carbine to his son. Well, that's going to do it for this segment, and I want to thank you. Remember, my email address is lbhtreasure, T-R-E-A-S-U-R, at gmail.com. Thank you, and God bless.